Hi everyone, welcome to Battlestar Collectica, the channel dedicated to the memorabilia surrounding our favorite TV shows and movies. And today we're taking a look at a very unique piece, the Starlog Japan 1979 Toy and Comic Mail Order Catalog. And for those of you who are not familiar with Starlog Magazine, it was a hugely successful and popular publication for decades in America. And it was for a while the go-to place to find out the latest news on your favorite sci-fi and fantasy TV show and movie, in particular, Star Trek and Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica. Now, a Japanese company wanted to duplicate Starlog's success in Japan and they actually licensed the name and produced 100 issues of what we call in America the Japanese Starlog and they are really cool and unique. If you haven't seen one, definitely treat yourself, pick one up as cheap as you possibly can on eBay or any other website and just take a look at how awesome those early issues of the Japanese Starlog were and are. You're going to be blown away by the quality. Now, there was a huge desire by Japanese sci-fi and fantasy fans for U.S. merchandise. But unfortunately, because of the restrictions placed on the Japanese market by the government there, it was very, very hard to import products from the U.S. into Japan. Now, it appears that Starlog Japan found a way around this by producing a mail order catalog in 1979. I've not seen one for 78 or 1980. So I think this was a one and done project for Starlog Japan. And basically they imported a ton of merchandise that normally could be found at US Star Trek conventions during this period. Now, as I flip through this mail order catalog, you're gonna see art books and posters and iron-on transfers, products like that in the first half of this publication blueprints for star trek and star wars one of my favorite is coming up here in a second it is a blueprint of c-3po and r2d2 now i have a feeling that a lot of this merchandise is unlicensed so what they did was a sprinkled in officially licensed products with unlicensed items that you could have found at a star trek convention during the late 70s early 80s here you see some Space 1999 merchandise. I was not aware that Space 1999 was a huge success in Japan during the 1970s, early 1980s. And here is Star Trek, the beginning of hundreds of items based on the classic TV show. Now, a lot of this is no longer produced today. You just don't find photos and iron-on transfers and keychains. It just is a bygone era when every retailer, either officially or unofficially, produced everything under the sun for classic Star Trek. I love spotting items in this catalog that you still can find at toy and comic book shows today, like that Star Trek record, some of the funny joke books on Star Trek. Look at that Federation flag. I've seen dozens of those over the past decades. And the really, really cool power record story albums there on the upper left, including the Gene Roddenberry produced Inside Star Trek album. And here you have a page dedicated to Battlestar Galactica. You have the iron-on transfers that we're really familiar with in the U.S. and these officially licensed posters. That one of Captain Apollo I have never seen before. I don't know if it was a Japanese exclusive or a unlicensed item. Here you have some more Space 1999 merchandise and I love the section devoted to Tolkien's world products based on the Hobbit and Lord of the Ring novels decades before the very popular Peter Jackson films. And here is Star Wars. Now, what I found interesting about this section, other than the Don Post masks for Darth Vader there in the upper right, you're going to notice no Star Wars toys in this catalog by Kenner. I find that fascinating, and I wonder if there was some problem trying to get those products into Japan. Here you see some 2001 Space Odyssey items and the very popular Remco horror makeup kits that were produced well into the early 1980s. 
And here are the ever popular calendars. And I recently was told, now this is not confirmed, but I was told that the Star Trek calendar has been in constant production since I believe 1974 and now has the record for the longest running calendar based on a single licensed product. We're talking movie or TV show. Here are some very popular record albums. You saw Spider-Man there in the upper right, A Space 1999, The Hobbit, and the very popular Forbidden Planet soundtrack, which is collected for the artwork on the cover. Here is Superman the movie. Look at all these iron-on transfers. I had no idea how popular they were in the late 1970s. And now we're starting to get into the good stuff, the heavy hitters, the toys. And you see there the Hulk and Spider-Man banks, very, very popular. The talking alarm clock for Batman right there. Even a Batman lantern. I've never seen one of those before. And on the next page here, you're going to see the Spider-Man bop bag, the Hasbro paint-by-number sets, just an incredible array of Marvel and DC merchandise that Starlog Japan imported into their country. And here you see the Spider-Man belt buckle. That is a very popular item today. I just love that. And I wish I would have gotten that as a kid in 1979. And on the next page, you're going to see the incredible array of Mego and Remco superheroes. Just take a look at this. Not only did you have the Mego 12-inch Wonder Woman and Superman and Spider-Man figures, but they also offered the Remco Energize Spider-Man figure. Here are some of the 8-inch Mego figures on the Holy Grail card backs that are so popular today. I guess what you would call a blister card. And on the next page, there's even more Mego goodness. Look at that Iron Man and the Human Torch and the Green Arrow. Just incredible. There are the Jiggler figures that Ben Cooper issued. I had no idea that they were still being manufactured as late as 1979. There's the Spider-Man cereal bowl. How cool is that? Even more merchandise here based on superheroes. And what I find fascinating is these large size wall figures that were made out of cardboard. You maybe have seen them in the past and there is a Cornelius one there. So I think it's really interesting that Planet of the Apes will still be in merchandised as late as 1979. Here are more art books, some more calendars. There's the infamous I Am Not Spock book by Leonard Nimoy that caused so much trouble for him in the 1970s. More Tolkien items there. More and more books and merchandise based on comics and movies. Some back issues of some popular magazines from this period and even more merchandise. There's even more Marvel and DC merchandise, especially those very popular Stan Lee written trade paperback books from the early 1970s. Here are some Star Wars products that were on sale in this catalog. Look at that Darth Vader poster and the jewelry. Here are some pages for children to have some fun with. I think that was cool that they added it in with this publication. There's some Marvel jewelry there, and I love the money on the upper right. These were definitely fan produced, especially that Frankenstein dollar bill. I hope you enjoyed this look into a very unique and rare Japanese 1979 mail order toy and comic catalog. This is something that you just don't find today. And it was a real pleasure for me to bring it to you. Please subscribe to the channel. Please give this episode a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a future episode of Battlestar Collectica. I will see you soon, everyone. Have a great Galactica day.